Door 5 in our advent calendar series. Welcome to a new video about UI page view controller. This is an extremely useful component and I often think very underestimated. Today we are going to have a simple look at how page view controller works. And this is what it looks like. So we have basically three different view controllers here and we get, for example, this nice page curl effect and we can switch between those uh, view controllers just like this. And we can also just uh, add a scroll effect so that we don't have these turning pages. But for a note application, for example, this could be pretty cool. And many people and many developers use that for an onboarding screen, for example. And I'm sure you will also find a proper way to use that great component. So let's bring up Xcode here. Let's call a single view application page view controller add that on the desktop and then we're going to have a look at how we can create this nice little demo application. First of all, we are entering our main storyboard file and remove the standard view controller here. I'm selecting it in my view controller scene, remove it and then we're bringing up a page view controller from our object library and here we go kind of looks like a navigation controller for example and since we are adding code to our page view controller later we also need a page view controller subclass so I'm pressing command and on the keyboard selecting a Coco touch class and I'm calling that root UI page view controller and I'm adding the page here and that is going to be the name of our page view controller which I'm going to create right now and then I'm entering my main storyboard again select my page view controller and in the identity inspector I add our new root page view controller class as its custom class and with that we completely configured the uh, page view controller in the storyboard. Now all we need to do is add some more view controllers. So let me just type in view here and add maybe three view controllers right here. You could also add 10 if you'd like. And here we go. And then we're giving each view controller a different background color so that we can um, see the difference between them. Maybe start with a red, a blue, and what else have we got? maybe kind of a yellow. And then we uh, have to name our view controller so that we can later access them with a storyboard ID. So again, I'm selecting my first red view controller. I'm opening up the identity inspector and there is a storyboard ID property where I'm entering red VC, for example, here. I'm doing the same thing. Let's call that one blue VC. And this one is the yellow. VC. And with that, we are completely done setting up our storyboard and we can now switch to our root page view controller. And the most important thing here is to adopt a specific protocol like we do with, for example, a table view. Here we adopt the UI page view controller data source. And in viewed at load, we then have to add ourselves as the data source. So self data source equals self. And with that we add, let me just quickly remove this template code here. And then we will continue with implementing the data source functions. The first one is page view controller for view controller before we can start with before here. So we return nil here so that we don't get any errors. We have one page view controller function that handles the view controller that comes before the current view controller. And we have a page view controller function that handles, let me also return nil here, um, the page, the view controller that comes after the current view controller. But before we add logic to our two functions here, we also need to think about where our view controllers come from for our page view controller. And therefore we are creating a view controller list as a lazy property here. Let's just call it view controller list. This is going to be an array of UI view controllers. And here we're simply adding a function to it. And we have to create 
three view controllers. So I have view controller one, two, and three, but to instantiate them, I need a storyboard object. So let's first of all create that. Let storyboard, which is going to be UI storyboard, we initialize it with the name of it, which is main and bundle nil. And then we can simply use storyboard, instantiate view controller with identifier, and we have the red VC. Then we can copy that two times, and we have a three and a two. We have a blue VC, and we have a yellow view controller. And then all we need to do here is return a list of view controllers into our lazy property. And we have view controller one, view controller two, and view controller three. And with that, we have a list of view controllers that we can now, first of all, use in view.load to set an initial view controller, so to speak. And I'm going to check if we have one view controller. So let's create a constant here first view controller in if let statement because this could definitely go wrong if we have a wrong name, for example, or if there is no element in our view controller list. So I'm choosing the first one. And if one exists, thanks to the if let statement, we can directly use the unwrapped first view controller. And then we use self set view controllers. And then we can use an array here with the first view controller, a direction, we say forward, we want this to be animated, and we don't need a completion handler. And the set view controllers function is part of the page view controller. And with that, we've set our initial view controller. Let's have a look at, if, uh, at this, if this works. And we should also check that in our storyboard, our root page view controller is the actual initial view controller of our storyboard. So I'm just checking here that this checkbox is set and then we're getting this little arrow here that indicates that this is the initial view controller. Then you run this in the simulator and if everything works, we should see a red view controller now in the simulator. So let's see, this is just the demo application. Here we go, we have our red view controller. So now we can start implementing those delegate functions or data source functions. And here we have to do a lot of error checking since it is possible that we could scroll to a point where no view controller is available anymore. So we are working with guard statements here and we're starting with guard let we create a view controller index here and we're using the view controller list and index of the current view controller so the view controller we're using here is a argument here in our argument list of this delegate function and we simply want to get its index if this works it's fine else we should definitely return nil here because then we have no view controller to display. Then we can create a previous index, which is the current index minus one. And this is also going to be the index that we are going to use later to create the view controller or to display the view controller that comes before the current view controller. So now we have to check with the guard statement again, if the previous index is greater or equal then zero. If that's the case, everything's fine. Else we have to return nil because then we had a negative index and that shouldn't happen. And the last guard statement that we should think about is the view controller list and the number of elements that are contained in it. And we should check that this is larger or greater than the previous index. Else we also need to return nil. And if everything so far worked, what we can do is the actual cool thing. We can simply return the view controller list and the previous index element. So this would give us, this line would actually give us the view controller that comes before the current view controller. But this of course was just half of the fun because now we have also to deal with the view controller that comes after the current view controller. And the approach is pretty similar. Again, we create a guard statement here to get the current view controller index. Again, we use the view controller list and the index of using the view controller that we have here as a uh, argument in our function. And if that does not work, and we don't get 
the index, we again return nil. Then we calculate the next index, which is the current index plus one. And then again, we have a guard statement here, view controller list count should not should be equal to next, should not be equal to the next index, else we return nil. And the last one, guard view controller list and count should be greater than the next index, else we return nil again. So let's just reduce that to one line here. All right. So with these precautions here, we can now be certain that when if we did not return nil until now, we can return view controller uh, or view controller list and choose the next element using the next index constant here. And with that, we have implemented the function that gives us the view controller that comes before the current view controller. We have the function that gives us the view controller that comes after the current view controller. We made sure that we do not go out of bounds by using our guard statements. And now we can actually run this in the simulator and see if that works. And here we go. So we have our first view controller. We can page to the next one, we can go back. And this is actually already pretty cool. But sometimes you do not actually want this page curl effect. And therefore, you can simply select your root view controller and change the transition style to scroll, for example. And then we can run this again in the simulator. And now again, you have your first view controller and we can page through all of the other view controllers, but now with a nice scrolling effect instead of the page curl effect. Now, this was a brief introduction into the UI page view controller. I think it's a great component. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day, and I'll see you tomorrow.